Well, hey guys, hope your week is going well. Um, as you can tell from the title and thumbnail, today I'm gonna be covering a topic that many of you ask me to talk about in the comments, and that is sunscreens for uh, babies and children. Which ones are good? Which ones do are kid friendly? And if I could cover some tips for getting kids to put sunscreen on. First thing I'm gonna cover is safety concerns. I think overridingly so, probably one of the most confusing areas for people to navigate is the safety of sunscreen. There are many mixed messages out there. If you Google sunscreen, you will get this massive search result back of all these terrifying sounding articles about toxicity and dangerous chemicals and nanoparticles and all of this, you know, endocrine disruptors, it can be incredibly alarming as a parent. You're like, oh my gosh, what should I do? How do I protect my kid's skin? There is no evidence of any harm to human health from applying sunscreens. I will say that again. There is no evidence of harm to human health from applying sunscreens. Sunscreen is a behavior that can help us to protect our skin from the damaging effects of ultraviolet light from the sun. And the sooner the behavior is started and practiced, the more routine it becomes and the more protective it is. So that means for young kids, learning how to put sunscreen on early is so, so important. Just like teaching them how to brush their teeth, just like teaching them how to tie their shoes. These are things that we learn how to do young. And unfortunately, most of us do not yet learn about the importance of sun protection for our skin early on. The sunscreen ingredients that I think parents and, and people in general become most alarmed about are many of the chemical filters in sunscreens, such as oxybenzone um, and benzophenone. You know, if you Google these ingredients, you'll get lots of reports of them being endocrine disruptors. But again, I will emphasize to you, there is no evidence of any harm to human health from using sunscreens that contain these ingredients. Aside from occasionally, they can be irritating uh, when applied to the skin, but they do not penetrate the skin. They, they do not cause any actual endocrine diseases. They are not linked to breast cancer in humans whatsoever. This has been looked at and examined extensively, repeatedly, not only by researchers in Europe, as well as Australia, as well as the United States. And it is agreed upon by expert consensus reports and continually evaluated that these ingredients are more than safe applied to the skin. But people still have reservations about them and that is fine. There are other options for sunscreens out there that do not warrant you having to choose those. So if you still want to exclude them, I totally understand. But do know, for those of you out there who are, who are worried, there is no evidence of any harm to human health from these ingredients. The other sunscreen ingredient, which generates quite a bit of controversy, particularly on the internet, um, is nano, nano-sized zinc, nano-sized titanium dioxide. People are very alarmed and very concerned about the safety of nanoparticles. And I, I can tell you with confidence that nanoparticle zinc, titanium dioxide in sunscreens and other, other personal care products applied to the skin has not demonstrated in any any manner whatsoever to be harmful for human health. It has been shown uh, in a very very rigorous studies to remain localized to the top layer layers of the skin and not be be absorbed systemically or have any untoward effects on humans human organ function or human health whatsoever. <laughs> so they are more than safe. But outside of safety concerns of ingredients and sunscreens for our health and for the health of our children and, and for people, many of you, um, understandably so, have concerns about these ingredients for the safety of, environment, of the environment, particularly in the setting of the recent Hawaii ban on some sunscreen ingredients. So as I reviewed for you all earlier about the Hawaii ban, um, some chemical sunscreen filters and nano-sized particles in, in sunscreens have been shown to be harmful to the, um, to the, the health of the, the coral reefs. And that is why oxybenzone has been banned in Hawaii. And many people have concerns about nanoparticles, zinc or titanium. So many of you want to avoid sunscreens that contain those ingredients 
from an environmental from an environmental point of view you're concerned about their impacts on the environment completely understandable again there are all there are still alternative sunscreens that are that that are more than safe specifically at non nano size zinc titanium dioxide but if you're watching this video, chances are you want to know what sunscreens are best for young children and um, teenagers. And the answer to that is the one that your child likes and uses. <laughs> Sunscreen is only effective if your child learns to put it on early and puts it on consistently and doesn't mind using it. So that is why I went over some of these um, safety concerns about sunscreen ingredients because if your child likes a particular sunscreen and you have reservations about the ingredients, hopefully that information maybe offset some of those concerns a little bit or gave you, gave you a, a, a place to make a more informed decision for you and your family. But do know that sunscreens are more than safe and the best one is the one that your child will use and use consistently. And that's probably going to vary quite a bit depending on what stage of life they are in. Teenagers, you know, will have different different skin skincare aesthetics than, than say a four year old. <laughs> but as far as sun protection for children, um, starting with, with infants and babies, babies under the age of six months should really not go be exposed to direct sunlight at all. Their skin is not completely mature. Their skin barrier is not fully formed yet. And sun exposure in a baby, particularly younger than the age of six months, can you know have significant, significant, significant effects on, on their overall health later on in adulthood. Their skin is very, very fragile. I mean, we talk about, uh, you know, your skin being more sensitive to sun exposure with after a chemical peel. A baby is like, I mean, that baby skin is really, 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 really precious and really susceptible. So absolutely, sun, sun direct sun for a, baby, a newborn baby is, is a no-no to their skin health. Um, when you do take your baby outside, use sun protective fabrics to keep their skin safe. Um, that is one of the better choices. But I have a whole video on sun protective fabrics, sun protective clothing. Um, you know, I happen to be a fan of Cooley Bar personally. Uh, they make clothing for adults, but also a lot of clothing for children and sun protective fabrics for babies. So, you know, that's, that's the company that I'm most familiar with just from personal use. They make really great products. I have a whole video talking about sun protective clothing, but um, choosing fabrics that offer UV protection is, is a good, good idea if you're gonna have to take your baby out in, in sun and expose them to the sun. Um, but any, any areas of the body of a young baby that are exposed to sun, go ahead and, and put sunscreen on those areas. It is more than safe. And the best sunscreen probably for baby skin because it is so susceptible to irritation is, is non-nano size zinc. So that would, be, that would be the overriding recommendation is to choose a non-nano size zinc or titanium dioxide sunscreen for babies. And guess what? Sunscreens for babies are more than fine for everybody else. So get, you know, find one that, that you all like and stock up and just slap it on everybody. But any sun exposed areas in young babies particular, go ahead and slather on that sunscreen very thick. I will list in the description box below some of my favorite sunscreens for children. Um, so check there. Um, but yes, non-nano size zinc titanium on any, any sun exposed areas in babies, probably the best choice just because it's the least irritating, not because it's the safest, but because it is the least irritating um, and it's the least controversial. So any concerns you have over the ingredients I mentioned previously, non-nano size zinc, not gonna, shouldn't, shouldn't come into play. But in young children, it is still imperative to have them protect their skin with sun protective clothing. You know, in Australia, they actually have leg legislation in place to, uh, you know, insist that schools and playgrounds, public areas have sun protective shields outside on the playground equipment because the, because the UV exposure there is so potent and their skin cancer rates are so incredibly high. Um, they have a lot of legislation in place for, to protect the, the, to protect children. 
Uh, but that the same those same those same tenets hold true for all children internationally. It's not just in Australia. We all should be protecting young children while they're playing outside with sun protective fabrics, a broad brimmed hat. Um, get them to to learn to wear wear that early and sunglasses as well I have a, an entire video about sunglasses it's mostly targeting adults but do know that young children need sunglasses as well uh, that offer UVA UVB protection for their eyes from the damaging effects to the eyes from ultraviolet light can set the stage for cataracts and um, you know skin cancers can form around the eyes later on in life so protect their eyes and you know when they grow up to be adults if anything they will they will thank you because of their ocular health their skin health and it can help protect them from from developing those crow's feet later on in, in adulthood that everybody everybody loves to hate so. <laughs> so keep their skin protected all through childhood as far as, as sunscreens for kids in this age group, young children, school age children, again, the least controversial, least irritating ones out there are the non-nano zinc. Now, do know that the non-nano zinc tends to be very white and filmy, and so as kids get a little bit older, they're going to be a little bit more more resistant with that white film of the sunscreen because it may be embarrassing to them, but those are those are the least controversial. Again, all sunscreen ingredients are more than safe in human health, so no worries. Whichever one your kid likes is a good one. But again, the least controversial non-nano mineral sunscreens. Still an excellent choice. Offers good protection against UVB, the skin cancer causing rays, and UVA, those, those rays from the sun that penetrate very deeply. The most important tip though that I will give you is to give your child several different sunscreens and let them choose which one they like. Let them play around with them. You know, I see all of the time like mommy and, and, and little girl kind of setups where mom's putting on her makeup and you know, the little girl has like a plastic makeup compact or whatever and she's mimicking mommy. The same behavior can be learned with sunscreen and skin cancer prevention behavior, um, you know, early on. You know, mommy's putting on sunscreen, daddy's putting on sunscreen, grandma, uncle, aunt, neighbor, caregiver, nanny, everybody. Putting it on in front of the child, reminding the child, these behaviors, you know, they see, they do, they repeat, they learn. So giving them a choice of the one they like, teaching them how to put it on themselves, so important. And as far as the type of sunscreen, you always wanna look for a sunscreen that is at least SPF 30 and labeled broad spectrum, meaning it offers UVB and UVA protection. And non-nano size zinc um, sunscreens, will will provide that so look for that on the label and select water resistant sunscreens as well they um, tend to stay on the skin much better particularly with activities that involve sweating and activity and running around and children getting wet um, it is much better choice now sunscreens come in sprays creams lotions sticks which ones are best for kids? Again, the one that they like, let's let's figure that one out, the one that they like, and let's let's try and navigate that area. So the best ones are creams and lotions uh, because you can get a good, consistent, even layer on there. However, kids do not always like putting those on. Um, another option are sticks, particularly around the eyes. The stick sticks work well. The sticks work work pretty well for little babies as well because ideally they should be largely covered up and you know they're helpful for putting on their little hands and fingers um, while they're wiggling around uh, but young children really try and get them to to learn to like the feeling of sunscreens and lotions and creams because those allow the most consistent application Parents, children, consumers in general are a huge fan of sunscreens in, in sprays. Um, however, I do not recommend spray sunscreens. They don't consistently apply, they don't consistently um, distribute sunscreen molecules, sunscreen ingredients in an even film. Um, a large percentage of the sunscreen is actually aerosolized and lost into the environment and doesn't make it onto the skin. Uh, but I appreciate the fact that they are easier to apply to kids. So my tip for those of you who really, really like the sprays is to select 
um, a zinc based sunscreen spray. That way you can actually see the film on the skin going on, you know it is on there. Versus a chemical sunscreen you're not going to be able to see if it's just if it's just the solvent, the, the, the inactive ingredients on the skin or the, or the actual sunscreen filters. A mineral spray, you can at least see it on there. And the, better, and the best way actually to apply it is to spray it in your hands, um, indoors, outside, you know, don't spray it outside because it's just you know, it's just going everywhere. Spray it into your hands and, and then put it on the skin um, copiously. <laughs> so sunscreens and spray vehicles tend to, you know, feel sometimes a little bit better to kids in particular, so I understand that. And that would be the way to put them on, is to actually spray them on your hands and then, you know, you can rub them on their face. Teach them how to do it themselves. A tip for teenagers though, don't try and and scare them about sun and skin cancer risks. That do, tends to not resonate very well with adolescents. Uh, they really don't don't receive those messages particularly well. Like, you know, telling them you'll thank me later. That really, I mean, I don't have teenagers. I don't, you know, live with them. So I'm I'm just speaking from kind of observation. But that really just is not effective. Um, instead, really work with them. Try and explore why it is that they don't like a particular sunscreen. Is it the feel? Is it the film of the, you know, does it leave a film? And try and try and just be really supportive to help them choose one, but continuing to, continuing to mandate that uh, sunscreen application it, it is, is necessary. Continue to demand that of your children all the way, all the way through. Um, but be supportive when they when they come into adolescence and you know may stop liking a particular one and may not like to use it. With adolescence and with puberty comes acne, <laughs> oily skin, and so some of their skin concerns may change a little bit. Some of their skin needs. Again, to emphasize chemical sunscreens more than safe and can be a good choice for, for oily acne prone skin because it doesn't leave that film that makes the acne look, look more prominent. It can actually help the acne, protect the acne from healing with a dark mark. So do not fear sunscreen as a, a trigger for acne, as something that's going to flare acne. If anything, it will prevent, it will protect the acne prevent flares that are induced by sun exposure and also protect the healing acne from any hyperpigmentation that results from sun exposure as the, heal as the acne is healing. So do not avoid sunscreen in an oily, shiny kid who's breaking out around puberty or throughout adolescence for fear of worsening the acne. It's, it's actually the opposite. Sunscreen is necessary uh, and sun protection because sun exposure to acne in particular is no good. So if, if they are battling with acne, oily skin, and have, you know, are resistant to put on sunscreen, be supportive, help them choose one that feels good, doesn't feel oily or greasy. I will list some down below that are very acne friendly. Um, so check there in the description box um, and help to help, and hopefully that will help your, your teenager pick one that, that is good for them. But sun protection is not just a summer, is not just a summer activity, okay? This is not just a water park, theme park activity. This is a year-round behavior. Um, so when the children go back to school after summer vacation, the behavior should not stop. It should occur in the fall, the winter, 365 days a year, regardless of how sunny or gray it is outside, every single day, sun protection needs to be on board. Um, if it's daylight out, ultraviolet light is hitting the skin and is is aging the skin and setting the stage for skin cancers. And so that protection needs to be ongoing. They need to continue to wear sunscreen all school year. Um, you know, where I see it falling through the cracks and always gives me most reservation is during the spring and fall. It's suddenly cooler and people just completely, completely bail on everything they learned over the summer with sun protection. They go out and, you know, start in, in fall sports band, marching band, they're outside. It's daylight, the sun is still is still there. Just because it's not hot out, just because it's not bright, just because you're not at the beach with a bikini on, you, you know, your child is outdoors. They're getting sun exposure in the car, you know, as they're going to school. So the behavior does not stop 
uh, once once school is in session. <laughs> One significant barrier in the United States that uh, in many states is changing is that schools um, do not allow children to bring sunscreen uh, from home and apply it. Uh, you know, they, they, they view it as a potential distraction. You know, it was really popular, I don't know if it still is, for kids to eat those Tide laundry detergent pods. Some of the schools are, are worried that kids will start eating their sunscreen. This is ridiculous. The risk of eating sunscreen is, is actually lower than the risk of skin cancer from inadvertent sun exposure. Yeah, I mean, unlike a Tide laundry detergent pod, however, I mean, if you did eat sunscreen, it's probably not going to kill you. Unless you uh, choked on the, unless you choked on the bottle, you know, I, I don't know, but um, to me, it, it just doesn't, it's just not a lot of rational argument uh, that sunscreen is distracting. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, I, I wish that there were better, better uh, things in place. And then lastly, I know I will get questions about this. What about vitamin D? Um, shouldn't our children get some sun exposure for vitamin D? Um, should we be concerned about rickets? Um, you know, <laughs> sunscreen use as a source of vitamin D deficiency has not been substantiated in any manner. The fact of the matter is people don't wear sunscreen enough to account for vitamin D deficiency and the rates of vitamin D deficiency. There is no amount of sun exposure that you can, that your child or you can receive that will quote raise your vitamin D without simultaneously mutating the DNA in the skin cells, suppressing the immune system, decreasing the ability of our immune system to fight off pathogens, fight off disease, um, and age the skin. So, you know, you're getting, you're getting all of these insults. We wouldn't even know what to tell you as far as how much sun exposure you should get without putting you at risk. You know, you can get niacin from uh, from eating a, a bowl of Frosted Flakes. They add it to Frosted Flakes. Are you going to go eating an entire box of Frosted Flakes to, to prevent pellagra? No, I mean, that's ridiculous. You can get it from other sources. The same argument holds true for, for vitamin D. Are you going to go, you know, mutating the DNA in your skin cells, aging the skin, suppressing the immune system, decreasing your ability to fight off infections, um, all so that you can get a little vitamin D where it can be obtained from dietary sources? and or supplements no I mean, but anyways guys I hope this video was helpful I know it can be a really challenging area to navigate what with all the controversies concerns fears about ingredients and sunscreens um, but the behavior is best learned early repeated and mandated and uh, the earlier your your children start protecting their skin the better off their overall skin health will be they will definitely thank you down the road when their burden of skin cancer is is reduced and when their skin is not as photo aged as their peers who who did not practice the behavior early on so <laughs> Your child will thank you one day, and the sooner, the sooner you enforce it, the better. And again, I will list in the description box um, a variety of sunscreens. I will label them as chemical, mineral, non-nano mineral. So choosing whichever one you feel most comfortable with and giving your child a, a spectrum to choose from that they can feel comfortable applying, that is key. Teach them how to do it and teach them to do it themselves early on. So repetition is key. But anyways, guys, I hope this video was helpful to you. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.